Most of us are familiar with the idea of GPS, or the Global Positioning System. We use it in our cars and on our smartphones, but do you know how it actually works? First, the GPS satellite transmits a message with its precise location and time, and our GPS receiver notes the exact time it receives this message. We can use the formula distance equals rate times time to calculate how far away we are from the satellite. Because the satellite transmits the message using radio waves, we know that they travel at the speed of light. Let's walk through a short example. It takes less than a second for the message to be transmitted, so knowing the time and speed of light, we can calculate the distance, which in this example comes out to over 6,000 miles. That's a typical distance based on how high the satellite's orbit is above the surface of the Earth. That doesn't exactly tell us our location, does it? We need more than one satellite for that, as we'll learn about on the next page. It's easy to think of GPS as just a single satellite that tells us where we are, but to provide global coverage, there actually need to be at least 24 satellites in orbit. When people refer to the Global Positioning System, they are typically referring to the satellite constellation that is operated and maintained by the United States Air Force. It was originally created for military use, but was made available for free to the public worldwide. There is a second global satellite constellation called GLONASS that was launched by the Russian military and is maintained by Russia's Federal Space Agency. It is also available for free to the public worldwide. While all GPS receivers work with the U.S. satellite constellation, because GLONASS is newer, you need a receiver that is specifically capable of working with it to receive data from those satellites. When talking about GPS systems, you may come across the acronym GNSS, which stands for Global Navigation Satellite System. This is a generic term to refer to either the GPS or GLONASS constellations. Now back to the question of how many satellites it takes to accurately determine our position. Let's walk through a short example that shows how our position is determined using a process called trilateration. Let's say I wake up one morning and have no idea where I am. I call my friend Aaron in Chicago and ask him for help. He tells me that I'm 308 miles away from him. That helps a little because now I know that I'm standing somewhere on a circle centered on Chicago with a radius of 308 miles. I need more information to narrow down where I am, so I call Tim in Minneapolis. He tells me that I'm 205 miles away from him. Now I've narrowed down my location to just two possibilities, where the two circles intersect. I need a third point of view, so I call Mike in Kansas City, who tells me that I'm 208 miles away from him. Now I can see the point where the three circles overlap, and I know that I'm in Ames, Iowa. This is how GPS works but it is also an idealized example. In real-world applications, the GPS calculations aren't this perfect, so you need at least four satellites to accurately determine your position, and the more you have, the better the calculation will be. The matter is further complicated by the fact that we're determining our position in 3D space, not on a 2D map. The process works the same way, but instead of circles, our position from a satellite could lie anywhere on the surface of a sphere with the satellite at the center. This is a little harder to visualize, but it works in basically the same way as the 2D example. There's a lot of information we need to receive from GPS satellites to determine our position, and we can receive a lot of it ahead of time so our minute-to-minute -minute calculations can be performed more quickly. This bundle of information is called the GPS Almanac, and it contains the orbital path and status of each satellite in the constellation and a model of global atmospheric conditions. Since the almanac tells your receiver the orbit of every satellite, you can acquire signals more quickly because you know approximately which satellites are overhead at any given time. If you've ever started up your system and noticed that it takes a long time for your GPS receiver to start working, it was probably busy receiving the almanac. Any satellite can transmit the almanac to you, and it takes approximately 12 minutes to receive the whole thing. The almanac is valid for about one week, 
so once a week you'll need to wait to receive the new almanac before your GPS receiver is ready to determine your position. When we discussed trilateration, we mentioned that GPS calculations aren't perfect. Now let's go through a few of the possible sources of error. Click each button to learn more before moving on. It's possible for the GPS satellite signals to bounce off of nearby structures. This causes a problem for your GPS receiver because it receives the exact same message twice, once directly from the GPS satellite and once from it bouncing off of the structure. Your receiver has no way to tell which message is real because they appear identical. They were just received at different times. It's safer to ignore that one signal, but the fewer signals you have to determine your position, the less accurate your position will be. The different layers of the atmosphere cause the satellite signals to slow down as compared to the vacuum of space. The same principle causes light to slow down when it moves through glass, as shown in this photo. Because of our distance equals rate times time calculation, a slower signal makes it look like the satellite is farther away from us than it actually is. This is why the GPS Almanac contains a model of atmospheric conditions, to help correct for this source of error. Hopefully you've gathered by now that time is very important to GPS calculations. Every satellite is equipped with a very precise atomic clock, but in the same way your watch can run a few seconds ahead, the satellite clocks can also drift. That's why GPS signals include an estimate of how accurate the onboard atomic clock is and corrections for the time. These are very small errors, but they can add up to a few meters of inaccuracy if left uncorrected. Here's some bonus information about satellite clock drift and the theory of relativity. The Air Force is constantly transmitting correction data to the GPS satellites to correct for this effect. The last source of error we'll discuss is called GDOP, or the Geometric Dilution of Precision. Basically, you want the satellites that you use to determine your position to be spread far apart from each other. The closer they are together, the more error there is in your calculation. This is easier to see if we just look at the way two satellite distance calculations overlap. In these pictures, the dark colored circle shows the ideal distance calculation, and the lighter colored circle shows the possible error in that measurement. The black dot shows the ideal position where the two measurements overlap, and the blue area shows the combined error due to the relative positions of the two satellites. You can see that when the satellites happen to be too close to each other, that the combined error becomes much larger. GDOP is an overall term that can be broken down to talk about its specific components. First, we can split it into PDOP and TDOP. TDOP is the satellite time, and PDOP is the 3D position precision. PDOP can be further divided into HDOP and VDOP. HDOP is the precision of the GPS calculation on the horizontal plane, and VDOP is the vertical precision of the GPS calculation. These values will come up when troubleshooting your GPS receiver. Your GPS receiver will calculate each of the DOP values. These values can be seen in your Ag Leader display and can help you troubleshoot a GPS problem. The values are like golf scores, lower is better. 0 to 3 is considered excellent, 3 to 5 is good and usable for most operations, and 5 or higher is considered poor and means there will be a lot of error in your position calculation. Some DOP values are more important than others depending on your operation. For example, VDOP, the vertical position, is very important for tiling. Test your understanding of terms covered in this lesson with this quick review.
We've now covered the basics of how GPS works and some of the errors that can reduce its accuracy. Use the table of contents to review this material or continue on to take the quiz.